and welcome back to Voyage of a Time Wanderer. Today I am here to share my nonfiction November TBR for 2022. So Nonfiction November is one of those reading events that has become a highlight of my year and it is hosted by Olive from A Book Olive and it is a celebration of all things nonfiction and there's always some prompt challenge words to try to help you uh, narrow down your TBR. So there are four uh, books that I've chosen to go with those prompts and then two other nonfiction books that didn't really tie into the prompts but I'm also hoping to get to this month. So I thought I would share what my nonfiction reading plans are for the month because I can't wait for November 1st to get started with these books. As always, most of the books that I read are either in audiobook or ebook format because my library is fairly small and often doesn't have the titles that I want physically, and I don't have the space or the funds to buy every book that I read, so I will be referencing some of the blurbs and stuff on my phone as we go. So the first prompt is Secret, and this is one of the prompts that right away I knew exactly what I wanted to read for this, and that is before and After by Alison Wilson, and this book is uh, a memoir by Alison Wilson, and it's also the memoir that inspired the miniseries Mrs. Wilson, which I highly, highly recommend. The actress Ruth Wilson wanted to tell the true story of her grandparents, and so she actually is playing her grandmother in this miniseries, which I think is so powerful, and it is a really fascinating story. I've watched it twice in the span of a year with different family members, and everyone has been absolutely hooked into this story. So this book, Before and After, the incredible story of the real-life Mrs. Wilson, is telling about this Mrs. Wilson who discovered after her husband's death that he had a lot of secrets that she wasn't aware of um, while he was alive. And so she kind of goes on this journey trying to uncover the truth about who her husband was, what their marriage really was, and kind of what implications that would have for her going forward. So the blurb says, age 19, Alison McKelvey was a self-confessed romantic immersed in books and poetry and dreaming of beauty, truth, and love. In 1940, whilst working as a secretary at MI6, Alison met Alexander Wilson. 30 years her senior, Alexander was worldly and charismatic. An intense affair quickly led to marriage and two children, but the Ellison's lives were then spiraled into the depths of poverty. Alexander was sacked, imprisoned twice, and then declared bankrupt. His lack of reliability was a hefty emotional burden for Alison to bear. Nevertheless, she loved her husband unreservedly and stuck by him through thick and thin. In 1963, Alexander died suddenly of a heart attack. Alison's world imploded when she discovered that their life together had been built upon layer after layer of deception. Who was Alexander Wilson? How well had Alison really known him? Slowly the lies were unraveled. Alexander had been a novelist, a spy, and devastatingly a bigamist. The inspiration for critically acclaimed drama Mrs. Wilson, Before and After, is the powerful and poignant memoir of Alison Wilson. Before peels back the complex layers of a marriage steeped in lies and the shattering heartbreak which followed. After tells of an intensely felt redemption through religion. Before and After is first and foremost a love story, but it is also an account of one extraordinarily strong woman's deep, unwavering faith. So I, after seeing the miniseries, immediately wanted to research more about the story and I think reading um, Alison's story in her own words is going to be very powerful and fascinating. Uh, ironically, most of the kind of like mid-star reviews that I've seen say that the first half of the book was really great and then the second half that focused on religion kind of went off the deep end into the author's faith journey and so as someone who does enjoy reading uh, faith-based books, I think I'm going to actually really enjoy the whole thing. So that is probably the title that I'm most excited for this uh, nonfiction November. And then for the prompt border, I'm planning to read Why the Dutch Are Different, A Journey into the Hidden Heart of the Netherlands by Ben Coates. This is a book that I'm actually already about 30% of the way through. I started it this summer and I didn't love some aspects of it. Uh, so I kind of put it aside because I got hooked into like Jane Austen July and October reading and kind of all that summer fun. But it is a book that I would really like to finish. It is written by uh, a man who immigrated to the Netherlands after marrying a Dutch woman and kind of goes through aspects of Dutch history and culture and what makes the Netherlands unique. The little description says it is a travelogue, a history, and a personal account of a changing country. So there were definitely aspects that I really liked. I think my reading experience was marred by having recently read Amsterdam by Rachel Shorto, which I think does so many of the things that that book is trying to do, but just does it better. 
So I do have a full review of Amsterdam Up. This is going to definitely be one of my favorite nonfiction books of 2022. I absolutely loved this book and can't recommend it highly enough. I listened to the audiobook and then promptly went to thrift books and bought my own copy because it's a book that I can definitely see myself referencing again or possibly rereading in the future. But I do really want to finish Why the Dutch Are Different and maybe the latter two thirds of the novel will redeem themselves slightly. I just had a problem with the way the author wrote about the women that he observed while traveling through the Netherlands. I thought that kind of cheapened uh, the other points that he was trying to make in the book. So maybe he will kind of tone that down in the latter two thirds of the book and I will enjoy it more. But I thought it fit really well into the border prompt given that it is about uh, an expat learning more about the country that he is now calling home. Then for the record prompt, I'm planning to read Ancestor Trouble, A Reckoning and a Reconciliation by Maud Newton. And this is one of my most anticipated uh, 2022 nonfiction releases. So I'm really excited to be getting to it this month. My hold on the library just came in. So I am going to be starting off my nonfiction November reading this book. And I'm super, super excited about it. As someone who loves uh, family history and genealogy research, reading a memoir about an author's kind of journey through her own family history I think is going to be really fascinating. So I think I'm going to really relate to this book on a personal level. Uh, the blurb for this one says, An acclaimed writer goes searching for the truth about her wildly unconventional southern family and finds that our obsession with ancestors opens up new ways of seeing ourselves. Maud Newton's ancestors have vexed and fascinated her since she was a girl. Her mother's father, who came of age in Texas during the Great Depression, was said to have been married 13 times and had been shot by one of his wives. His mother's grandfather killed a man with a hayhook and died in a mental institution. Mental illness and religious fanaticism percolated through Maud's maternal lines to an ancestor accused of being a witch in Puritan-era Massachusetts. Maud's father, an aerospace engineer turned lawyer, was a book smart man who extolled the virtues of slavery and obsessed over the purity of his family bloodline, which he traced back to the Revolutionary War. He tried in vain to control Maud's mother, a whirlwind of charisma and passion given to feverish projects, 30 rescue cats, and a church in the family's living room where she performed exorcisms. Their divorce when it came was a relief. Still the meeting of her parents' lines in Maud inspired an anxiety that she could not shake, a fear that she would replicate their damage. She saw similar anxieties in the lives of friends, in the works of writers and artists she admires. And as, as obsessive in her own way as her parents, Maud researched her genealogy, her grandfather's marriages, the accused witch, her ancestors' roles in slavery and genocide, and sought family secrets through her DNA. But sunk in census archives and cousin matches, she yearned for deeper truths. Her journey took her into the realms of genetics, epigenetics, and the debates over intergenerational trauma. She mauled modernity's dismissal of ancestors along with psychoanalytical and spiritual traditions that center them. Searching, moving, and inspiring, Ancestor Trouble is one writer's attempt to use genealogy, a once niche hobby that has grown into a multi-billion dollar industry, to expose the secrets and contradictions of her own ancestors, and to argue for the transformational possibilities that reckoning with her ancestors has for all of us. So to me, that sounds like the perfect nonfiction book. It sounds like she really uh, digs into and grapples with uh, what it is like to uncover your family history, and what you can learn from knowing more about your ancestors' history and the people who made you who you are. So I think I'm going to really, really love this book. I absolutely can't wait. I have it both on audiobook and an ebook from the library, so I'm planning to probably listen to most of it, but then also um, there's a lot of photo inserts obviously being about her own family history, so I'll be referencing those photo inserts throughout. So this to me ties into the record prompt because researching your family history is all about finding your family in the records, in census records, in immigration records, in newspaper records. So that's how I'm tying it into the record prompt and I think it's going to be absolutely fascinating as someone who shares um, an interest in family history and kind of all this stuff that's wrapped up in DNA research. Uh, ancestors, all that kind of thing, I think it's going to be absolutely a book that basically feels like it was written just for me. And the last prompt is Element, and this is the book that is probably the most tangentially related to the prompts. I love how the Nonfiction November prompts are always easy to kind of massage into the direction that you want them to go. And so for Elements, I'm going to read A Place to Belong, Celebrating Diversity and Kinship in the Home and Beyond by Amber O'Neill Johnston. And the author has actually an Instagram account called Heritage Mom Blog where she posts a lot about uh, diverse children's books and that kind of thing. And so this book is really, it's 
really more of like a parenting homeschooling book which isn't super applicable to me at least yet. So the blurb says, a guide to celebrating cultural heritage and embracing inclusivity for families of all backgrounds. Gone are the days when socially conscious parents felt comfortable teaching their children to merrily tolerate others. Instead, they are looking for ways to authentically embrace the fullness of their diverse communities. A Place to Belong offers a path forward for families to honor their cultural heritage and champion diversity in the context of daily family life. So each chapter in this book goes through different ways, especially through literature that you can bring your family's unique uh, cultural heritage into the home and also celebrate um, the cultural diversity in your communities and in the broader world. So as someone who is in a multicultural relationship, my husband is Zambian and I am Canadian. Uh, that's something that I'm always kind of thinking about in the books that I have, the art that I put up in our house. So I think this is going to be really interesting to read uh, a whole book that's about that. And I'm tying it into element because to me it's really about the elements that make each family and each person who they are, um, different cultures and how they blend together in families and in communities and how we can uh, best embrace and celebrate uh, those cultural elements. So that's how I'm tying it into the prompt element and I think it's going to be really interesting and give me some food for thought to reflect on about how I can continue to um, celebrate our multicultural little family. And then I have two nonfiction books that I'm hoping to get to this month that aren't uh, directly tied into the nonfiction November prompts. The first is The Letters and Writings of Franz Jägerstatter. This is a book that I wanted to pick up after watching um, the Terence Malick film A Hidden Life, which is an absolutely stunningly beautiful film. The message is powerful, the aesthetics and scenery are gorgeous, and the soundtrack is so gorgeous and haunting and I listen to it all the time. It's a really powerful story of uh, an Austrian man in the Second World War who chose not to uh, be conscripted or swear an oath of loyalty to Hitler and as a result was executed. He is now on the path towards sainthood in the Catholic Church and there is a book that is his collections of letters and writings that he made while he was in prison awaiting trial and eventually his uh, execution. And so most of these are letters between him and his wife as well as kind of some religious reflections and thoughts that he had written down while he was in prison. So I think that will be a really moving collection to read and one that I'm hoping to kind of space out over the month because I think it's going to be uh, really quite sad and hard-hitting but also very thought-provoking. And then lastly is Courtiers, The Hidden Power Behind the Crown by Valentin Lowe. As someone who lives in Canada and so is under the British monarchy, I really enjoy royal watching and following along with the work of the royal family and then also in the last couple of years obviously there's been a lot of drama to follow along with. So over the last two years or so I've read a couple other books that deal with the most recent drama in the modern royal family with Harry and Meghan returning to America. I've read Finding Freedom which is kind of their unauthorized authorized biography by Omid Scobie. I've read The Palace Papers by Tina Brown and I'm just finishing up uh, Revenge by Tom Bauer. And so Courtiers is kind of the most recent publication in this uh, genre and leading up to Harry's memoir which has been released in January I want to have read kind of the main books that I think he will be rebuttaling in his memoir so that I have the full background. So I definitely want to get Courtiers read in November in the lead up to that January memoir release. And so Courtiers, the blurb says, the gripping account of how the royal family really operates from the man who spent years studying them in his role as royal correspondent for the Times. Valentin Lowe asks the important questions, who really runs the show, and as Charles III begins his reign, what will happen next? Throughout history, the British monarchy has relied on its courtiers, the trusted advisors to the king or queen's inner circle, to ensure its survival as a family, an institution, and a pillar of the constitution. Today as ever, a vast team of people hidden from view steers the royal family's path between public duty and private life. Queen Elizabeth II, after a remarkable 70 years of service, saw the final seasons of her reign without her husband Philip to guide her. Meanwhile, newly ascended Charles seeks to define what his future as king and that of his court will be. The question of who is entrusted to guide the royals has never been more vital, and yet the task those courtiers face has never been more challenging. With the cloud hanging over Prince Andrew, as well as Harry and Meghan's departure from royal life, the complex relationship between modern courtiers and royal principles has been exposed to global scrutiny. As the new Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Kate, equipped with a very 21st century approach to press and public relations, 
now hold the responsibility of making an instant institution relevant for the decades to come. Courtiers reveals an ever-changing system of complex characters, shifting values and ideas over what the future of the institution should be. This is the story of how the monarchy really works at a pivotal moment in its history. So I'm hoping what this book brings that is uh, unique and kind of sets it apart from the vast swath of other royal nonfiction out there will be its focus on courtiers and kind of focusing more on the role of those hidden public servants that we don't necessarily have a name or a face towards but are really guiding a lot of the actions of uh, the royals that we know and follow. So I'm hoping that it is an interesting book and has some nuggets of uh, information or stories that I wasn't previously aware of. So those are the six books that I'm hoping to get to in November for Nonfiction November. If you are going to be participating, I hope you have a lovely reading month and I would love to know uh, which nonfiction book you're most excited to be starting off with. And until next time, enjoy wandering through the pages of a good book.